The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke Jesus told His disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, There was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And the widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of His chosen ones who call out to Him day and night? Will He be slow to answer them? I tell you, He will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord our Gospel for today, World Mission Sunday, comes from St. Luke. We have been reflecting on persistence. Persistence, first of all, in prayer. In the first reading, we find the people Israel engaged in battle against the Amalekites. But aside from soldiers and weapons, they had prayer as their most potent tool. But Moses, with his hands lifted to God in prayer, was really teaching the Israelites a lesson. Persistence in prayer is rooted in faith, believing in God who hears us, a God who loves us, and a God who will defend His people. So without faith, there will be no prayer life. Without deep and persistent faith, there will be no persistence in prayer as well. In the second reading, in the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy, we find one dimension of prayer, which is listening to the Word of God. For the Word of God is inspired. It is God who is the author. It is God who speaks to us. And so prayer is also persistent listening in faith to the God who dialogues with us. But St. Paul adds, another dimension. Timothy should not only go back to the wisdom of faith coming from the Word of God, he must also preach the Word of God. What he has heard, he must share with others. So we find the beautiful combination of prayer as listening in faith to God and mission as sharing God's Word and God's wisdom to others. Persistence in prayer should also lead us to persistence in mission. In the Gospel, Jesus wants to give us a lesson on persistence in prayer, not losing heart in prayer. And Jesus, in a way, invents a parable. Jesus is a genius in evangelization. He uses narrative, he uses stories to convey the deep truths that he wants to teach us. He paints a picture of a judge, a corrupt judge, very selfish, who did not care for God or for other human beings. He was simply thinking of himself, his safety, and his interest. And this corrupt judge was persistently being called upon by a widow so that this judge would render a sentence beneficial to the widow. But in the end, the corrupt judge gave in to the widow's request, not because of 
a sense of justice, not because of love for the widow, not because the truth dictated that the judgment be in favor of the widow. No, nothing of this, nothing of value. The judge decided in favor of the widow simply because he did not want to see this woman again who has been pestering him and also in order to save himself. This woman might become violent, so I better save myself. Now, this, this person, this corrupt judge in the story, while a, a creation of the imagination of Jesus, even on that level, is a despicable person. You do not want to deal with this type of person. You do not want more judges of this type in our courts who will render judgment not based on justice or truth or love. These are indecent people. But what is the point of Jesus? He says, if this corrupt judge could listen to a widow and respond favorably to a widow in his corruption, much more God who is good and loving God will hear us. If the corrupt could hear us, will you doubt God's capacity to listen to us? God who is all good, God who is all just and truthful, God who is all love, will He not listen to us? So Jesus is motivating us to persevere in prayer by presenting who God is. God who can be depended on. God who is a father. God who will hear us. So persistence in prayer as an act of faith is rooted also or based on our concept of God. Who is our God? Do we know the true God? And if we know the true God, we know that He is loving, just, and truthful, then we have no reason not to persevere in prayer. And so the story ends with Jesus asking this question. When the Son of Man comes, will He find any faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? Will he find people who believe that God is good and because of that faith will turn to God for their needs, entrusting their lives, their safety, their mission to God? For God will accomplish what we cannot do. So we are back to the same lesson. Prayer is not just about mouthing out words. Prayer is not just venting out our frustrations. Prayer is an act of faith. Who truly prays? Those who believe in God. And who will persist in prayer? Only those with faith that is stable and also quite persistent. And as we saw in the second reading, this faith, which is stable, will continue praying to God, no matter what. Even if I don't see my prayer being granted the way I want them to be granted, I will continue prayer. What I call the stubbornness of people of faith, the stubbornness, they won't give up on prayer. Even if people around them say, stop praying. God does not listen to you. Give up. Just do it your way. But people of faith will say, no. I believe in God. I know God will do it in God's time. And so they are persistent. But these people also, without their knowing it, but sometimes with deliberation, their persistence in prayer becomes a missionary act. They tell people and they invite people to faith. 
So they become not only prayers, people of prayer, but they also become missionaries. Today is World Mission Sunday. We are asked to pray for the missions. But may I add, as you pray, be a missionary yourself. For what you have heard in prayer, what you have experienced in God, of God in prayer, that you should proclaim to others. It is not enough to pray for our needs and the needs of others. Proclaim to the world who God is, the God that you pray to, the God that you have seen, the God that you believe in. In one of my travels to a poor country, I won't mention which one, a poor country, I had the privilege to meet a lay missionary a Filipino at that. And I was surprised to see a lay Filipino missionary in that area. I had met before that encounter some Filipino priests and religious women, but to see a lay person doing mission work in that area really uh, surprised me. Because at the back of my mind, a person like him, with a family, would go abroad, not for mission, but to earn, to earn money, so that he could support his family back home in the Philippines. But this person was there as a missionary. In my conversation with him, some sort of an interview, I saw the secret because he revealed it to me. He says that God has been faithful to him. He, he, his family has received a lot of blessing from God. So he says, God is trustworthy. I have no fear. If I go to mission, God will take care of my family back home. I just want to share God's love with others. And of course, he says, every day that I spend here far from my family, I also get worried, anxious. But then I pray. And when I pray, I know my family is in good hands. And with the peace that comes from prayer, he becomes more determined to do his mission there. In this poor place that he has now considered his second home. What a beautiful lesson. Persistence in prayer, persistence in mission, rooted in stable faith. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.